I am Shanti, the artist behind Shanti Finance. Around Christmas, I was planning to paint a Christmassy um, snowman, but because of my move to North Carolina and all that jazz, everything got a little bit haywire and my schedule got a little messed up. So I thought better late than never, why don't I paint my snowman now? But since it's not Christmas anymore, it's not a Christmas themed snowman, it's Olaf. And followed by my Elsa painting, I thought Olaf is the best one to paint right For today's video, I will be working with watercolor and a little bit of white gouache. And this is a very simple and easy beginner's uh, watercolor tutorial, even applicable for kids. kids. Even kids can do it very easily. So you can see the um, materials are all ready. Now I'm going to wet the surface of the background and carefully around the figure. And when the entire surface is wet with lots of water, I will go, I'm going to start with the painting with different shades of blue. So I'm using two different shades of blue, Prussian blue and uh, cobalt blue. But if you have indigo or turquoise, you can add those blues as well. So it just has to be different shades of blue. You can add a little bit of gray if you want a little grayish, bluish color. And these are the tones that generally go very well with snow paintings, wintry landscapes. So I'm choosing these colors. And because the entire background surface is wet, the paint, you can see that it is automatically flowing and blending itself. I don't have to do a lot of work. That is the fun with watercolors that if you have the surface uh, wetted carefully then it, uh, it the paint itself does a lot of the job and you uh, don't have to work very hard on the background. Once I have the entire surface covered with a shade of a blue I will add some trees or rather some impression of trees. I'm not going to be very um, detailed on the background trees because I just wanted like an impression of trees be, make it a little bit um, not so prominent is the word uh, that it's a phrase that I'm looking for because I want the focus to be the snowman in the front and not anything in the background so for the trees I'm uh, adding Prussian blue and adding a touch of viridian green with the Prussian blue and adding the silhouette of the trees now the trees when they dry out they're going to dry out a lot less dark than it is showing right now. So you want to go a little bit darker than you want it to be and what want it to be in the end, because when the paint dries, it will dry a lot uh, lighter than what you applied. That is just the nature of watercolors, nothing to do with any particular uh, brand of paint or painting style or anything. Just watercolors dries a little bit lighter, um, just up as opposed to acrylic, which typically dries a little bit darker. So going on with the background still. And now I'm adding a little bit of snowflakes here and there with the white gouache. I'll do that once again when the paint is completely dry. But if I started at that point, then it creates a nice effect at the beginning. Now onto the ground surface. Once again, just like the background, I'm getting the entire surface of the ground wet carefully around the body of the snowman and adding a little bit of uh, blues and grays here and there. Um, you can also add purples uh, to this uh, shades because that is also a color that goes very well. So it kind of depends on what color palette you choose. A little bit of greens, purples can also work very well with your snowman paintings. And just because I uh, painted the snowman just like Olaf, doesn't mean that you have to do that it was just an instagram post of a snowman uh, somebody created in uh with the snow itself that uh, made me think that oh why don't i make my snowman uh uh, the Olaf character, especially after painting the Elsa in the last uh, video, I was kind of in the frozen frame of mind. <laughs> so I just thought to go with uh, this uh, Olaf character for my snowman. You can just make it a regular snowman, the plump snowman that we usually are accustomed to seeing. 
onto the igloo i'm just creating a very loose impression not going for very much of details again um, but one thing you would note that entire background foreground wherever i'm painting snow and even in the body uh, there is very little area that i'm actually leaving white mostly i'm adding shades of purple blues grays and even a little bit of green here and there and that is the nature of snow snow being white and a very reflective surface it reflects the colors that it sees around it so being a kind of um you know cloudy day kind of impression so i'm adding these grays and purples and blues for shadows and reflections so that is very important do not leave the entire snowman white that will not be a good impression um, adding a little bit of shadow to the back of the snowman to give the actual figure a little pop so this is one thing that you should remember whatever if you're painting a snowman in the front you want to make the foreground at least around the body of the snowman quite a bit dark so that the lighter colored body gets a little bit of pop i lifted a little bit of paint from the edges to give a nice white reflective look you can do that while the paint is still wet once the paint is dry it can be a little bit hard to lift off paint but it still can be done adding more shadows around the eyes and the face what i'm doing is i'm first uh, adding a little bit of purple gray color around the places that i want to uh, put the shadows and then i'm blending it nicely with the surrounding areas i do not want dark blotchy lines everywhere i rather want some nice shadows onto the carrot nose of the snowman i think this is the cutest part of any snowman the carrot nose um, since my painting uh, surface was all wet you can see that a little bit of the orange seeped through in the surrounding areas i will carefully lift off the excess paint from surrounding areas and clean the edges nicely later but this is one thing that uh, if you're a beginner with watercolors you need to uh, be very careful about that if the surface wherever the, there is water on the surface the paint will tend to automatically flow or blend in those areas so if you don't want certain colors in certain areas do not wet those areas i should have let the entire paint dry before i started on the carrot nose and that would have avoided this so that's one lesson um, that i would strongly recommend you to remember if you are painting this you can uh, once again see that the paint keeps bleeding into the surrounding areas just because the uh, surrounding area is still wet but i'm adding a little bit of the orange shadows here and there to show the reflection of the color on the snow adding the stick hands or the branch hands to the snowman which i'm doing it in a dark brown shade first i did it in a lighter brown and then i followed it up with a very dark brown same with the rock buttons for the body of the snowman now adding some more darker shadows around the edges of each block of snow to give the body a little bit of pop like i said you want to make the edges or ar around the body of the snowman you wanted to make those areas a little bit darker than the rest of the areas so that um, automatically the snow figure gets a little pop the contrast is what i'm talking about over here once again coming back with my gouache to make those snowflakes a little bit prominent and adding a few more snowflakes here and there that brings this painting to the end i think this was one of the easiest watercolor tutorials ever possible i hope you like it don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you do and share it with your friends and family who would like to do a nice and easy snowman painting and see you next week